Once again, welcome to Sabbath School. Praise the Lord that we can still worship in freedom, even though we have a lot of restrictions. <laughs> we can still worship in freedom and worship the living God. You should pray about that. Because I don't doubt that very soon, even the whole freedom of being able to discuss with conviction the Word of God might become restricted. We are in a day when we see our Constitution being ignored, a day when we, um, as Ellen White said, the Constitution is being repudiated. It's being ignored and uh, not held as the standard that anything is, it can be um, um, put in place as, as society norms. In other words, it's about whatever the strongest voice is rather than what the Constitution says. And we are in danger as, as the people of God. We know that, you know, as the people of God, I, I think it's, it's troubling as a, an American citizen that we feel restricted on our personal freedoms. Like, what if I don't believe I should have to wear a mask? Why should I not be able to, in my freedom, be able to exercise my rights, you see? But this is not what I'm talking about. We know that the main concern is worship. The main concern of freedom that we have enjoyed for these many years in this country is that we have the right to worship God as the Word of God dictates. And we have that religious freedom. So that is beginning to be infringed upon. And I think that we will see that more and more. We know the prophecies. Now, um, so all, I, all I'm trying to encourage you with is we should praise the Lord that we're still able to worship God in freedom. We can still speak the Word of God without them pulling us off YouTube. And I believe that that is the hand of God holding back the wounded strike. Because have you seen them do that to officials and so on? Pull down their Twitter account, pull down their Facebook account, pull down, I don't know about YouTube. Um, but what I'm getting at is, are you prepared when not only do they say you can't go to the building, but you can't congregate at someone's home? And you can't watch on YouTube anymore because they've shut all that down. Anything that they did deem, say, hate speech or whatever you want to say. Are you ready to walk with you and God in the Word of God? You must be grounded in the Word yourself. You can't rely upon your connection to the church or, or your connection to some teacher or some preacher or... You've got to be in this day and age in the Word of God for yourself. Be prepared. The end events are coming. And now is the time for God to fill you with the early rain because when He pours out the latter rain, which is just around the corner, the purpose of that latter rain, one of the purposes, finish the work, and prepare you for the close of probation. But if you're not receiving the early rain, those things may pass you by and you're not even aware of it. You may be so worried about the fear of whatever's going on that you're not paying attention. Be in the work today, personally. Don't take this time of freedom for granted any longer. Let's pray. Let's pray and let's get into the lesson number eight, which is called Ministering Like Jesus. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we know the time is short. We know that, we know the prophecies. We know the freedoms will be gone. We know there will be persecution. We know that there will be uh, the mark of the beast in force. And then there will be a death decree in force if we won't worship that image to the beast. So we know that those things are coming right around the corner. But right now, we want to be ministering like Jesus. He knew the desperate need of mankind, and He knew that they needed a true connection with His Father by the power of the Spirit and the Word. 
we too want to have the same fervor that Jesus Christ had for souls. Father, put that in your church, we pray. Bless us, draw near to us, and lead us in your word today, in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. So, ministering like Jesus, remember we're talking about making friends for God this word, and did, are there people that might have considered Jesus to be their friend? In that day, I'm talking about when he walked the earth. Did they feel that he befriended them? I think so. I, I always use that example of the woman at the well, but there are others. But didn't she feel comfortable enough with him that she could talk with him and discuss things with him? And when he told her some things that he knew about her, did she take offense and get upset? Or was she, had he disarmed that by being her friend? Why would you talk to me? I'm a Samaritan woman. He disarmed those, will you say, prejudices or whatever by being a... By, this is the key. By, by taking a true interest. This is how he did it. By taking a true interest in them. That's, and I, that's different from making yourself take interest and acting like you actually are interested in their life. That's different. Do you think people can tell? They probably think you're a salesman when you, when you, when you try, you know, to, so, you know, where do you work? Where do you, and it's not an, a real interest in them, it's just you're trying to look for an opportunity. Is that how we approach witnessing? Trying to look for an opportunity? Do, and we may read the statement where it talks about Christ ministered as one that cared about their needs. So that's my own words, but that's a summary. In other words, not a put-on thing, in other words. He actually cared. Do you believe that Jesus Christ cares for you? That's one of the things that makes you a Christian and draws you to Him in the Father and the Spirit is that you actually believe He loves you. you act, it isn't just that He put it on to, I want to make myself look good, so I'm going to act like I love that poor, wretched person. Rather, He actually cares for this poor, wretched person. <laughs> he actually loves and cares for this poor, wretched person. And, uh, and what I want to say is, we have to be the same. Not be fake... What's the word? Superficial? What, what do you call it when you... I can't think of the term I'm thinking of whenever you... Well, I don't want to get... Uh, it's a manipulation. Yeah. In other words, you're trying to look like something you're actually not. Okay? You're putting on a show to make them think because you've got to make them a Seventh-day Adventist to get them saved. Rather... Jesus Christ died for that person. Lord, you died for that person. Can you use me to reach them? I want them safe in your kingdom. Can you put love in my heart, Lord, so that when I talk to them, they know I really care? Can you make me really care? They're so, they stink. I can, every time I'm around them, I can smell they haven't had a bath in two days and they, they smell like alcohol and cigarettes and uh, it's offensive to, can you make me love them? Do you think God can do that? Yes. Do you think God can put love in your heart for the unlovable? Yes. Absolutely. And I don't care if they're unlovable like I just described or they're unlovable because they got six degrees and they're so haughty and proud and, and you know what I mean, and they're so arrogant and th that's pretty unlovable too, you know what I'm saying. There's a lot of ways we can be unlovable as, as not as Christian, but as humans. Um, so anyway, ministering like Jesus, I believe truly that if we minister with the heart of Jesus, see people through the eyes of Jesus, understand what Jesus Christ actually wants to accomplish in their lives. If we are connected with Him in that way, that we can understand it and we can minister like Him, it will be a, like a magnet drawing a piece of metal. 
a strong magnet. You ever seen those big ones that can pick up a car? It'll be like, they, they will really have to resist to not come to the loving God that we are portraying. And yes, people will. Some people will resist and run the other direction. But if Satan's trying to hold them back and they're being drawn, was that woman at the well drawn to him? She was drawn to him. Those children that he said, no, let the little children come, they were drawn to him. You understand what I'm saying. What was so magnetic? I believe it's that we have a need in our heart. We want to believe there's more to life than my poor, miserable life that I struggle with all the time. There's got to be more. We want, to, even if I'm an atheist, I would like to believe that there was a loving God. I mean, deep in my heart, unless I'm a rebellious atheist. You know what I'm saying. Let's say you're just disappointed by churches. Has anyone ever been disappointed by a Christian? <laughs> and they say, you know, there's no God, this is ridiculous. Or a disease came along and they're discouraged, they're so discouraged, there can't be a God if He allows this. So they feign atheism. But deep in their heart, God has put a measure of faith in all men and He would draw them out of that if they only knew God loved them personally. You see, we have a mission and that is to, exp to be the light of the world. To expose them to the character of their Savior and their God. And then let the Holy Spirit do the work on the heart. I believe it is a strong draw if we can, is, I don't think the right words emulate, emulate Christ. We need to be like Him. Not just pretend to be like Him is what I'm getting at. Okay, let's read the memory verse. Let's go back into these texts here. Look what it says from Matthew 9, 36 in the memory text. But when He saw the multitudes, He was moved with compassion for them because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. I maintain to you that Jesus Christ had that attitude because in his youth, up to this 30 years old or so that he was, that he had the heart of his Father. He had received of the Spirit. He had received of the Word. He had received of the relationship. And he had walked with his God for those 30 years. And so the love of God, his Father, shone out through him as it did in heaven before he came, right? We can be the same. That's why Christ said, "You are. I am the light of the world. Then he says, you are the light of the world. Now it says, let me read this, per, first paragraph, Sabbath afternoon. Jesus genuinely cared for people. He was more interested in their concerns and needs than in his own. His life was totally centered on other people. His was a ministry of loving compassion. Let me just stop there a second. Uh, uh, why? Why was that the way he was? Why was he that way? Why was he more concerned about them than his own needs, even though he was living out under a tree at night? You know, he didn't have a home, didn't have a place to lay his head. I believe it was what I mentioned earlier. Well, let's put it a different way. Because that is the way God is. God gave you oxygen to breathe this morning on your way here. God kept your heart beating last night while you were asleep. You didn't do that. You cannot keep yourself alive. But God does that continually. God ministers to His creation continually. He's a servant to His creation. Is that almost impossible to grip? I mean, I just find that so phenomenal, the, the character of God. So this is why Jesus was this way, because He knew His Father. He learned of Him in the Word, didn't He? 
He grew up. He learned obedience by the things that he suffered. He was taught the scriptures. The Holy Spirit moved upon his heart even from birth. That's the difference from me and you, by the way. You must wait until you're at the age of accountability to say, Lord, please come in. Jesus pre-existed and therefore he said, I come to do your will. And he was born of the Spirit, right? So there is a difference. But it was still by choice that he maintained that connection. Even as a little baby, he chose. You know, the scripture says that God foreknows us. I mean, not that he predestined us in the sense that he made one righteous, one wicked. No, but rather he knows who will accept the truth and who will reject. It says the wicked go astray from birth. Jesus Christ chose from birth to maintain that relationship, praise God, but he made his choice before he came down as a baby, whereas we have to fumble and fail and make our mistakes. That's why all have sinned. We have a carnal nature and we fall and we fail and we come to a knowledge of God and then we make our decision. Okay, so now, but back to the idea. When you're has anyone in here not... Well, I don't want to put anybody on the spot. Most of us have been baptized. Which symbolizes a death to the old life then. A death to the carnal nature. A resurrection to the divine nature. A resurrection to the Holy Spirit living in you. To living in the Spirit, walking in the Spirit, and doing the things of the Spirit. So, Jesus Christ, why did he act that way? Because he had the heart of God, the heart of the Father. He was a partaker of the divine nature. Now we're not talking about divinity in the power of divinity. We cannot partake, well, I guess you could say we can partake of that power when he gives us miracles to do. Because <laughs> you can't do it on your own. He, when Peter raised the dead or whatever, that's a, that's a d divine prerogative that God did through him, right? By the Spirit. But at the same time, those men and women in that early church partook of Christ and became like Christ to the point of death many of them died for him we need to do the same folks I, I, I want to repeat this I said this one other time but I just want to I, I like the just the way this Lefebvre is the reformer's name which I had never heard of I had read it before I suppose but I read it in great controversy he made the comment how did he say it? If ye be Christ's, ye be full of the divine nature. See, we don't live that way as Christians. We think we're full of evil. So we live that way. We don't walk by faith, is what I'm trying to say. Um, Annika, uh, I'll tell you what. I've got a, um, Bob, by chance, would you take this to the back for me? Someone wants to make a comment. But let me, let me finish my thought real quick before I forget it. <laughs> what was I saying? Lefebvre. He, he said, ye be full of the divine nature. I was saying that we actually live, we don't live by faith. Folks, if you believed that Jesus Christ was living out his life in you moment by moment, then you would stand and walk in his promises. And your Christian witness would be different. Because you're walking by faith. Look, what I'm saying to you folks is that we need to begin to walk by faith as God's people. Stop letting Satan tell you you're a miserable failure sinner. You know what? You were. But I am in Christ now. He is able. He is able to make me walk and do righteously because he lives in me. That should be your statement. Yes, I blew it yesterday. Yes, I blew it this morning. But I am in Christ and he is able to keep me from falling. He is able to complete the work that he began in me when he saved me. That should be the attitude that we have. Okay, I, 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 go ahead. Make a comment. I so. just wanted you to repeat the name that you said so I can write Lefebvre? it. Lefebvre? It's... Yeah. I don't know how you spell it, but it's in, it's in one of the chapters in Great Controversy. Is it like La Fever? Yeah. Okay, that's good enough. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. But I just found it, because see, I have, a, you want to say espoused, I have adopted the belief over my 
Christian walk, at least in recent years, that we are to be partakers of the divine nature, that that is what we lost at the fall. And we received of Satan's nature when we let him be the leader. I say we, but you know, Adam and Eve let chose a new leader. They received of his spirit. And what was it said? He's a liar from the beginning. He's a murderer from the beginning, right? We know the character of Satan. Even though Satan didn't know his character, what it was going to turn out like, God knew. And that's what, and so immediately after the fall, not very long, Cain became a murderer, right? Adam and Eve became liars. It wasn't me that did it. She did it. It wasn't me that did it. He, uh, he, did, he made me do it, or whatever. The lack of personal responsibility and so on. I mean, they, they immediately received a different nature from what they had. So we struggle with that nature, but I say maintain your belief by faith. God said that baptism symbolizes what has actually happened in my life. What has actually happened in my life is that my carnal nature died with Christ on the cross. I died with Him. Therefore, I live a new life in Him. And now I live and walk in the Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will work out salvation in me. And I will walk righteously before Him. Not because I'm strong, but because He lives in me. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is able and He lives in you? People of God. Do you believe? This is how we should live. So many times we live like we're in the carnal nature. Because we failed. I think it's because we failed so many times, right? I'm not saying there isn't a struggle. I've said before, the carnal man likes to come alive again. But Jesus was our example that, that though he received of sinful flesh, right? He was made, made like unto, how does it say it? Unto sinful flesh, right? And he received, according to the flesh, his nature through who? King David, it says, of the seed of David. In, I forget what chapter that's at right now. But nonetheless, you know what I'm talking about. So, Christ received a carnal nature, but the Holy Spirit kept it in subjection and kept it dead. And he walked, and we should walk as he walks, the scripture says. How did he walk? I don't say anything of myself. That's what he said. I don't do anything of myself. I do what the Father tells me, and I speak what the Father tells me to say. So he had such a connection with the Father that he lived and breathed in his presence every day. There's where we make our mistake. We believe that we can Keep that little atmosphere right there by our desk. There's our Bible. Got a, lot, a little light like that, you know, just shining on it, you know, a little Bible laying there on the table or, or on, our, on our table in the, in the living room. And we spend our time and then we walk away from the atmosphere of that presence. We flip on our phone and start listening to YouTube as we walk away, or we listen to music, which is Satan's music, by the way. Most of the music in the world is Satan's music. I don't care. You know, oh, there's a lot of Christian music that is in that category, too, with so-called Christian music. But what I'm getting at is we walk outside of that atmosphere of heaven that we were just in when we were kneeling and, 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 and being with the Lord, and then we walk in the carnal nature the rest of the day. Why don't, why wouldn't we be failures? Jesus did not do that. He walked with God continually. At work, when he was in the carpenter's shop, he was in the atmosphere of heaven continually. And I think this is, should be our goal. If we want to be ready for the close of probation and we want to be ready for the outpouring of the latter rain we need to be in the presence of God continually now and if that means that we have to get rid of things in our lives that are 
inhibiting that. Even though it may be, we have the freedom, we can do this, we can do that. But if, if it means that we've got to get rid of that in order to, because of, we know our own weakness, so that we can walk in the atmosphere of heaven continually, then we need to do it. If that means... You, need, you can't even get a phone that's not a smartphone. I was going to say, I don't think you can. But there used to be you'd be able to get a phone that wasn't a smartphone with all the junk on you know, it. I'm not saying you've got to get rid of your phone. All technology is about the way we use it. You've got a radio in your car, it's about what you put on that radio. You've got a TV at home, it's about what you put on that TV. I've got to say, there comes a time, though, that you get rid of that because you can't control it, let's say. You keep falling into it, you keep following into it, and you decide, look, at least for now, i got to get rid of that because it... Have you ever heard anyone say, I've been off Facebook for a month because I was so into it, I, I mean, I was, I was obsessed by it, you know, that I, sh I, I suspended my account. I've had multiple people tell me that, you know, because they get so drawn into it that they, they live and breathe in Facebook. I think you need to replace that with living and breathing in the Word of God. Amen. You, can, you, can, you can listen to audio verse. You can read all, reread re all the books that Ellen White wrote. Start reading right now. Probably the close of probation is going to come before you finish all those books. <laughs> Probably. It depends on how fast you read. But even on audio verse, you can listen to them, right? Read the Word of God as your. Wasn't that what they said um, in the Old Testament? He said, "Talk about it while you walk along the way," talking about the law of God and so on. That was what they told the Israelites to do, right? The Hebrews, as you walk, when you stand up, when you get up, when you lay down, you know, thinking on the Word of God. We need to move in that direction. Is all I'm saying. Now we're back to ministering like Jesus. If we do this. And we live in the atmosphere of Christ and the Holy Spirit and the Father from morning into our day, lifting up prayers along the way, contemplating what you just read that, wow, that was amazing. You know, the Holy Spirit opened that to your mind and you think about that throughout the... Just like that, that mention of Lefebvre and that, that, that statement he made back in the 1500s or whenever it was, back a while ago. It just stood out to me, you know. And it comes back to my mind and I think about it from time to time. So, filling your heart and mind with that atmosphere of heaven and walking throughout your day with Christ puts you... Remember the parable of the kind of ground that seeds fall on. In other words, it... Nutrify, is that the word? It puts nutrients into your soil. And you are ready to be used by God, is what I'm saying. People of God, we need to be ready to be used by Him. We think He's just going to hit us with a lightning bolt one day and tell us, I need you to go witness to that person. But guess what? You've been fumbling around with your own life last week and the week before. You hear what I'm saying? And you're not ready when the opportunity arises. Was Jesus ready when the Father said, I need you to go to Samaria? I don't even know if Jesus knew who he was meeting when he went to the well. But his father sent him there. The disciples went off to do their thing and Christ is there. He's ready. The soil is ready to be used by his father to reach this woman. Folks, we could finish the work of God if we would live and breathe in the atmosphere of heaven. It's our choice, you see. This God won't force us to do. He can solve your sin problem. I believe God is mighty and powerful. And He has already defeated sin. That's not a problem with Him. It's a problem with me. It's a problem with you. But it's not a problem with Him. But what He cannot do is make you avail yourself of all the blessings He wants to pour out to you. You must make the choice. You know what? Instead of listening to that rapper, <laughs> I've never listened to rap music, but I'm just saying, instead of listening to that rapper in the car on my way to work, I don't know what happened to my computer. Um, 
I'm going to put on audio verse and I'm going to listen to it as I drive along. I'm going to be engrossed with my Savior. I'm going to set my mind on the things of God. Not to be saved, I'm saved in Him. But because I want to be used of Him, I want the work finished. I want souls saved. Every soul. I don't want a single soul. Lord God prevent it. That there be one soul that isn't in heaven because I wasn't ready to be used. And he was not able to use me that day. And Satan attacked that person and drug them down into the world because I wasn't willing to be a light. I, I, I don't want to get depressing because <laughs> I know we've all blown it. But God is able, right? All I'm saying is there are people, I believe, when the last soul is reached that is willing to turn to the light, when the last soul is reached that is willing to turn to the light, Jesus is going to come. Because the message has already gone to the four corners of the world. It's already gone out. You know of Adventist World Radio, right? You know of the internet. You know of satellite. You know of Bibles in almost every language. Well, there's, a lot, there's some really uh, uh, dialects that need to be reached. But I believe God will send a holy angel to do that work if needed. I mean, there's times when God will step in, I think. You know, th th there's evidence of that. We've seen even testimonies of some of those kind of things occurring. But the point is, do you really want to stay here any longer? I want to go home. I want my grand grandkids, see if I can name them off, Elijah and Noah, Landon, Bentley, Lily, Emma, and Malachi. I want them all to grow up in heaven. I'd rather them not deal with the things I've dealt with in this world. Have you dealt with any heartaches? <laughs> Have you dealt with friends or family or whoever betraying you and hurting you and you dealt or, or, or sorrows of disease and so on? I'd love for them to grow up in the kingdom of God. I mean, they're in the kingdom of God here, right? We, uh, what I mean is, when sin is put down, I want the Lord to come. So, ministering like Jesus. I'm out of time. I cannot believe that. <laughs> but I think that we have the point that in order to treat people like Jesus treated them, in order to see them like Jesus saw them, in order to minister to them like Jesus ministered to them, we must be partakers of the divine nature and live and walk in the atmosphere of heaven. Which means a change in my life. It means a change in my life. It means a change in your life. Let go of this world. Focus upon the work of the Lord and on and, and then give yourself and yield. I guarantee every person listening right now or in the future on a DVD or wherever you listen to this, I guarantee you that if you yield yourself to Him daily and say, Lord, use me to save souls, change me, I give myself to you, I want to do your will. You do that, God is faithful. He will strengthen your spiritual understanding. And then He will give you the words to say in that day. And He will actually orchestrate and make that meeting happen. And God will work through you. And you will find in the kingdom of God renewed that there are people there because He used you to influence in their life, to lead them along the way. To, to stand by a, a side and say, no, 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 not this way. Walk over here. It's dangerous this way. Whatever that may be. And God uses you to be a part of the work of saving mankind. All those that would turn. Let's pray. Let's ask for God's blessing upon His church continued in this, uh, in this concept. Lord, we want Your latter rain. We've said it for years. Give us a renewed passion. For knowing you personally in our lives, individual lives, right now. We know the time is short. We need you. 
to be the people of God you want us to be. Pour out that early rain and yes, pour out that latter rain. Make us ready, Lord, that we might be used by you to reach dying souls or souls in danger that they might be turned to the light and to the truth and to the Lord Jesus Christ. We ask for this blessing. We ask for this outpouring because we cannot do it. We've tried for a hundred, whatever, 120, 140 years. We've tried. We've put all our effort in. But so often we're doing things in our own strength. Lord, we need the outpouring of your Holy Spirit. Please fit us for that outpouring in our daily lives. And then help us to encourage our fellow church members to do the same. That we encourage them, you know, I think it's time that we start spending more time in the Word. I think it's time that we start praying more. I think it's time that we take serious the day that we live in. Help us, Lord to edify each other and that your church may be strengthened by the actual presence of the Holy Spirit that we might finish the work that you have to be done. We praise you. We thank you for hearing us. In the Lord Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. God bless you today.